42 RLE transmission going into limp mode, staying in second gear. Are you getting the code P1776 solenoid switch valve latched in the LR position or P1775 solenoid switch valve latched in the TCC position? Well guys, in this video, hopefully I will show you how to resolve your issue guys. So this transmission is in tons of different vehicles, Chrysler, Dodge, uh, you name it, tons of them. So specifically in this video, we happen to be working on a 2004 Jeep Wrangler TJ guys. But like I said, you might be having this issue in a different car with the same transmission. So this video will basically cover all the different vehicles with this transmission, but specifically uh, this Jeep here guys. I will talk about all the differences in this video. Uh, so we're gonna discuss what the problem could be here guys. So those two codes basically mean that possibly like on some of your transmission plugs, there might be water inside of the plugs themselves guys. That would be the easiest solution, right? Um, usually it's either an electrical problem. That is what that code means. And if it's not an electrical problem, then it is a problem with the solenoid switch valve itself which is located right under here, guys. I'll show you where it is located. So you basically have to drop your pan and then you have to drop the whole entire valve body out with the shift solenoid, take the whole thing apart and the solenoid switch valve is actually inside of the valve body, guys. So we're not gonna try to do that repair in this video. This thing's going in limp mode on me and I'm trying to fix it. Uh, in this video, we're gonna focus on electrical. And by electrical, I mean the harness, guys. So we're gonna focus on the harness itself. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to check the harness and hopefully something is wrong with our harness so I can resolve this problem and be on. If the harness is good after I check it, the next thing I'm doing is the solenoid switch valve. That'll be a different video, guys. Okay, let's get into this video right away. Okay, so as far as Jeeps are concerned and many other vehicles, so uh, right here is the TCM. This is a transmission control module. So uh, 2003, 2004 Jeeps. I don't know the years of other vehicles, but a lot of them have a TCM right here. And they also have a PCM. So like a computer right here um, that controls the motor and everything. So 2005, 2006 does not have this computer right here. That computer is basically built into this one. Then you will have four plugs on it. But if you only have three, then it's like half the computer's there and the other one's there, right? So the harness that we're checking, guys, we're not checking every single harness in the whole vehicle. We're basically checking the harness. See, if you go underneath the vehicle, so I'm gonna go in right here so you can see. So there is a harness that runs under here. So part of it goes to the gas tank, right? Like in my case, it goes to the transfer case. Then it goes to the transmission. See, there's a plug here, plug on the other side. There's your two speed sensors, right? So it runs forwards. Okay, and see, it comes out right there. It runs to a couple different plugs on the side of the motor. Some of it runs over here, plugs into here and here, see? Um, and then, then it goes back and it runs up, plugs into some of these, and then it runs fuel injectors, and it also runs to the TCM, transmission control module, guys. So that is the harness that we're gonna check in, th in this video, guys. Uh, in your case, if you don't have the computer, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it just runs into this, so you can still check it. So, I mean, in order to check this harness, guys, there is no way around it. You have to pull it out. Like, what probably happened to it, if this is the case, and hopefully it is. See, I already started taking it apart. Like, it could be broken, one wire could be broken somewhere in there or in here, or in here, could be broken on top of this. There's a lot of like strain spots, like right here, it pushes so hard on here. All this moves around, you know, 20 years goes by, it could have rubbed through somewhere. Also on the side of the motor, right there, it's hard to see here, but see right there, it is massively rubbing up against the side of the motor. So I mean, there's no way you're like unwrapping it in the vehicle and checking it. So you gotta pull that harness up. How do you do that, guys? You have to be extremely patient, take your time. What you're gonna absolutely need, and there's no way around it, guys. You're going to need tape and a permanent marker, okay? And there's no exceptions here. Every single plug that you disconnect, see, I already started doing this. So basically, see, I unhooked this, 
from the computer, right? And then you just go around and you unhook every single plug, see? Every single thing. Like this is ready to come out. I just wanted to show you guys. And you have to label every single plug and every single plug that you disconnected from. So later you can put it back together. Trust me, you're not gonna remember. You have to do it in a way, so if somebody else is putting this together, they will be able to put it back together. If you don't label it, you basically, you're done, you're, you might as well throw your Jeep out or your vehicle, it's never going back together. See, every single plug needs to be labeled. So you gotta take your time, you don't wanna break the plugs, and you gotta go around, and you gotta unhook every single plug. Look at it closely. Figure out how it works so you don't break it, how it opens up. You're gonna need flat screwdrivers like this. You're gonna need tiny screwdrivers like this. Needle nose pliers. So you can clean all the gunk out of these. You know what I mean? Figure out, put the little screwdriver in, lift this up. Uh, you know, go in there, clean gunk out. You really gotta take your time. Like, it should take you to pull one of these harness out, harnesses out. Uh, listening to music, sitting in your garage, it should take you an entire day, realistically, to do it right and do it slow. Label every single thing. So I'm at the point now where like, I got this complete harness disconnected and I'm ready to pull it out. I might even have to, I don't know yet, but I think I'm gonna have to uh, just lower the transmission a tiny bit. So I'm gonna have to disconnect the skid plate here, put a jack under the tranny and lower it like a few inches to get it out through here and pull it out. So once you have it out, guys, and you can lay it down on the ground in your house actually, so it's nice and clean in that. Then I will show you how to check every single wire on it and go over it. So I'll see you guys in about 30 minutes when the harness is out. One other thing guys, so these things, I got these at Napa, you're gonna need these. There is all these plastic little clips that attach the harness to everything. So you need these, you put it in behind, and that's how you pop them out. Using screwdrivers and that, you can actually damage your harness. So you're gonna need these. Okay, for real, pulling the harness now. Okay guys, just giving you a little update here. So yeah, it took me about five hours to label everything and unplug every single plug, if you're working on a Jeep, right? So now under here, so everything basically from this point, from that corner, I got everything out all the way to the gas tank, all the transmission plugs, everything. See, I got it down here. So everything was easy-ish, except for this one plug here because of the size of it, see? That's the one that plugs in on the other side of the transmission, right? So what I had to do is, I got a screwdriver and see, the problem was the dipstick tube, uh, the dipstick for the transmission right here, see? So I mean, you could disconnect it at the back of the motor so you could move it over. I ended up just putting a screwdriver in like this and see how you can kind of move it, watch. Okay, see like this? So I was able to move it like that and I was able to get that plug out through here in case you're struggling, guys. Okay, I'm moving on. Okay, I had to show you guys this. So I'm basically ready to pull this out, but see there's a wire, a the fuel rail, right? Uh, wires. See, there's a wire that goes down there, loops around. One goes to the oxygen sensor and the other one goes right here. Why would they put it there? Ah, this drives me insane, guys. So I literally had to remove the power steering pump to get to that plug. It took forever, guys, so that took me 45 minutes to get to that and figure it out. So now I'm getting this off. Okay, and then the harness is coming out. Whoa, okay, guys. Thanks. I got it. I guess it wasn't easy, but you could do the whole thing in a day to get it out. So there it is. Okay, I'm gonna lay it out and, uh, yep, we're moving on. Okay, we got the harness in the house, guys. So now, I did like a visual inspection of it. And I honestly don't see anything wrong with it visually on the outside. But what we got to do is we got to take these like plastic looms here off. See? Like I want to see the wires inside. So you don't just strip the whole entire thing because then you're not going to know how it goes back together. So you just do sections at a time. So I'm going to start with this this spot here, which it's, they're prone to break here. They're prone to break here by the motor, uh, sometimes by some of the plugs by the transmission. So we will check. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unwrap all this tape here, and then I'm gonna slide this plastic thing off. I'll probably slide this one off up to here. This one, you know, up to this plug, and here up to here. You don't wanna do more than that at once 
because then you're not going to know where this wire comes out once it untangles, right? So I'm going to remove everything there. We're going to inspect all the wires. So, I mean, you can use a utility knife very carefully, scissors. You're going to need electrical tape, lots of it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that area. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, here we are about uh, 10, 15 minutes later. See what I did? I unwrapped everything. So now you can sit here, right? And I mean, you can go over every single wire and do a nice visual inspection. And you can see if any wire is broken or rubbed through, which I mean, everything's looking good here. So I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna do a really good look off camera, guys. And then if I decide that this area is good, I'm grabbing electrical tape and I'm rewrapping it just the way it was with lots of electrical tape, right? And then I'm, you know, moving on to this area. I'm gonna do this area the same way. And I mean, that is how you inspect a harness. And I mean, in my case, it could be perfectly fine. I mean, some areas you might not even have to do, like this goes to the gas tank, right? So obviously that's good because the motor runs, everything works, you know, could do that little section. Pretty straightforward. It is time consuming stuff, but this is something you can do at home for free, guys. Inspect your harness. So that is what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I'll show you guys a few more clips of a few more areas and hopefully I find something wrong with it. Okay, see what I did? I took electrical tape. I rewrapped everything. So that way these are all in the right spots. So now if I'm going to move on this way, let's say. Get it? Everything's good here. I am keeping all these. I can just throw these back on after. Wherever I need to. Okay, I think I'm going to do this next. Maybe this and that area. Okay, I think you guys got this. Anyways, okay, see you soon. All right, so see what I did? Unwrapped all these. I inspected all the wires in, on these two plugs here. Everything's looking good here, so I'm gonna tape these back up and I think I'm gonna go this way now. So you guys obviously get what I'm doing. I'm not trying to repeat myself here, but you know, just visual inspection of the wires, guys. A wire is never gonna break inside, you know, and the plastic's gonna stay intact. It's gonna be rubbed through or it's gonna be broken. But if, if it looks like this, it's good inside. You don't have to worry, oh, did it break inside, but the plastic, you know, rubber coating on the outside stayed intact. Yeah, that doesn't happen with wires, guys. Okay, moving on. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half, so it is a little bit time consuming. So I got just the cables left here that go onto the transmission and the transfer case. I haven't found anything wrong with this harness at all so far. It looks good, so I don't know, we'll see about the rest of it. I checked all the plugs, there was no corrosion, like everything is looking really good here. So one thing I just wanted to show you guys, see anywhere I have these things that attach, right? There's one here. So I'm not gonna take these off because then you can't put them back on. So I'm just pulling this off up to it and I'm just cutting this off, get it? And then I'll do the same on that side and I'm leaving these on, kind of like how I did this one, see? And then I put the tape on and then I'll be able to throw all these back on at the end, you know, if I find something wrong with it, I will repair it. And if not, then we're reinstalling it back in. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going guys and then I'll just show you how to put these back on and uh, hopefully we do find something wrong with it to get this Jeep out of limp mode though. Okay, well, I can't find anything wrong with this harness, just so everybody knows. So another thing I did is like, see these plugs for example. See, so I opened up the back of them. I checked all the wires in here. I'm going to come to the conclusion there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all these back on. You know, put, put all this back together the way it was. I'm going to go install it in, back into the vehicle, guys. And then I'm going to cover one more ultra very important thing is the grounds. I'll show you how to check your grounds. I've already done that earlier, but I'll show you what to look for, guys. So I'm going to put all this together, put it in the car. See you guys soon. Okay, so I got the whole harness back together, looking good, but I decided, you know, I got it all apart. So I took these things apart as well, and I'm checking all these wires. Everything's looking good, this one. I'm going to take this one apart, check it. Uh, if nothing's wrong with it, I'm just going to see you guys outside when this is installed. Okay, so I got the harness about halfway in, so I said I would show you guys the ground. So, for example, on this vehicle, right? So the negative off the battery terminal, make sure everything is clean. You know, no corrosion, nothing, right? So that is the negative. So that runs down there. And one of it, see, one of it right on the side of the motor. See that? It goes on right here. See, look. Not that. See this one here underneath it. 
So that goes straight from the battery, see? Straight from the battery onto the motor. So you gotta make sure that this is very, very clean to bare metal like this on the, on the actual motor itself. All clean, bare metal. You gotta make sure this thing is not rusted. Clean, bare metal both sides. You might have to sand it, whatever you gotta do, right? So then what happens is this goes on, and then this goes on, which you gotta make sure this is all nice and clean too. And this gives your grounds to everything, to the computers, to whatever else. It gives the grounds to the harnesses, right? So make sure your little uh, bolt is nice and clean, bare metal, see I cleaned everything. So you know you're getting good grounds. And then another cable from this goes to the body. So in this car, see it's right there. So make sure that's all bare metal, make sure nothing's corroded and rusted. And make sure everything's nice and tight for your grounds, guys. So those are the grounds. So I'm gonna put those on. I'm gonna put, keep putting the harness on and I'll tell you guys one more last important thing once it's installed. Okay, that is the front of the car. Here's the side, right? So that's the transmission. So now the plugs themselves, see? So there's like the big plug on the side here. So obviously, you know, we looked inside all the plugs, everything looks good. But on the actual transmission, look, you can grab your phone, see, and you can look in there. Is it corroded? Is it wet? Is there crap in there? Is it green inside? It is not, and all the plugs look good. So that's how you check your plugs. As far as electrical goes, everything's looking good here, guys. Okay, I got like three plugs left, and I'm done putting this harness back in. Okay, everything is put back in. So now, even if you know you're gonna change the transmission or whatever your plan is uh, that you're working on next, don't leave anything unplugged. I plugged every single plug in. I started the Jeep. I took it for a drive. Everything works except for it's going in limp mode on the highway, and then I get code. P1776, which is solenoid switch valve latched in the LR position, guys. So what I'm gonna do next, guys, is I'm, I found a uh, rebuilt transmission for $1,000. So I'm either gonna change the transmission or I am gonna change the solenoid switch valve inside of the transmission, guys. So check out the next video, guys. Uh, we don't have electrical problems. I feel like el I eliminated the electrical possibility of there being an electrical problem. So tune into the next episode, which will either be transmission swap or solenoid switch valve repair, guys. Not the shift solenoid block, the solenoid switch valve. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Until next time, everybody.